Good evening. So good to see all of you tonight. Thank you for being here. And if you're visiting with us, we especially want you to know how glad we are to have you with us tonight. Thank you so much for choosing to be here at the Oldham Lane Church of Christ tonight. And we hope that uh, we make you feel welcome and that you're blessed by your time here and uh, in worshiping God. And we hope that the message tonight also has uh, an encouragement for you, a challenge, and will help you uh, be who God would have you to be. Tonight we're going to look at three uh, personalities or, or attitudes uh, that, that people can have when it comes to serving the Lord in his church. When it comes to being a follower or a servant of Jesus, uh, three different uh, approaches or dispositions, if you will, uh, when it comes to a servant. And let's look at the first one. We're just going to go through these and, and um, hopefully help, help us point out some things that will be helpful and encouraging and help us zero, zero in on what a servant of Jesus looks like, how they should act, and really try to get at the heart of a servant of the Lord. And so we're going to look at a, a nobody, a somebody, and a servant. And so uh, obviously three of those, each, each of those are very different. And we're going to see uh, what there is to look at with each of those. Now, this first one, the nobody. Now, we're kind of thinking attitudes or, or, or personalities or approach or disposition of people when they, when they come to the church. And certainly these, these, uh, these, these would spill over into other areas of life. But that person who uh, comes to comes to the table, and they see themselves as a nobody. And this person may believe that they have nothing to offer, no talent or ability to offer the church or anyone. They look down on themselves. They sell themselves short. They, they don't really think they have anything of value that's needed in the church, and, or that, even, that they may not even be worth... Uh, uh, somebody being a friend to, or nobody wants to include them, or, or, or they're just not connecting. It's because it's me, and I look down on myself and, and think less of myself and think something's wrong with me. Woe is me. I'm a nobody. Or when asked to serve, uh, when there's an opportunity to serve, oh, who am I? I can't do anything. I, oh, I, I'm not one to do that. I don't have the the ability, oh, there's people that could do that much better than me. It's that person who maybe they see themselves as a nobody uh, truly, or they at least, that's their default approach, like, oh, I'm, I'm no one, I'm nothing. I have nothing to offer. They may have very low self-confidence for any number of reasons, and certainly there are many things that can happen to us in life early on or in in our uh, young adulthood, adulthood that can uh, hurt our confidence, that can, that can give us a lot of hurt, that can give us challenges in, in seeing ourselves in the right way. There are things that can happen to us that really hinder us feeling very confident sometimes uh, that we do have something to offer, that we are someone and something of value uh, to the Lord, to others, to his church. And so I don't want to make light of any of those hurts that have happened to people or any tragedies or any real difficulties that people are having in, in dealing with uh, confidence, if you will, or feeling, of, uh, feeling like they have anything uh, to, positive to offer. Uh, so we don't want to uh, make, make light of that. I do believe there is a place for sound professional help uh, for people. And, and sometimes people may need that to help them with what, you know, what we might call self-esteem or confidence or things along those lines. So I think those, are, those can be very real feelings. But we, but, and, and while that can be true, there's something very fundamental that we also need to get at, and that is that uh, you're not a nobody, that, that you are someone that brings something to the table to, to, to offer, to contribute, and it doesn't matter uh, what your age is, or what your uh, if you're male or female, or or uh, you know what all of your you don't have to have ten talents, you don't have to do fifty things running around and 
be over all kinds of things. There may be one thing you're doing. Everybody, uh, pretty much, pending health, sometimes people really are limited with their physical health, uh, but there, are, there is usually always something somebody can do if they're looking for a way to serve in the church. We're talking about being a servant in the church. And so we need to help people, as I said, fundamentally see themselves right uh, in light of the way God would have them see themselves when it comes to the church. Because you're not a nobody. And some people just don't feel that way. And so look at, let's look at our first passage there, Psalm 139, 13 through 18. Psalm 139, 13 through 18. And the scripture says, for, talking about God, for you formed my inward parts. You, God, knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance, and your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when, you, uh, when as yet there were, was none of them. Look at verse number 17. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake, and I am still with you. Look at how God made you. You see that? You weren't just thrown together. This wasn't a casserole that you just threw all the leftovers in a pan, put it in the oven, and brought it to the fellowship dinner. This is not what happened here. You were knit together intricately by the hand of God, is what he says. And are you going to... Read that and believe that you're worth nothing and that you have no value, that you're a nobody to God and to the church? Are you going to believe that you have nothing to offer, no gifts, no value? Now think about that. If you feel that way, if you believe that way, where did you hear that? Who told you that? Remember? When Eve was deceived in the garden by the serpent, and then Adam followed, and then God came walking in the garden looking for him, and he found him, and he asked them why they were covered up. And what did he tell them? What did he ask them? Who told you you were naked? They believed somebody they shouldn't have been believing. Is that right? They were listening to voices they shouldn't have been listening to. They were believing messages, whether it be from family or friends or culture or one, someone at school or somewhere, someone. They believed someone else's opinion, someone else's uh, uh, statements about their value and their worth, and that became how they saw themselves. That happens to us, doesn't it? It's easy to happen. Things in this world and going through school and life and family things can hurt you deeply and cause you to uh, question your own value. Look at verse number 17. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. Do you see that? Do you see that? So whose thoughts was the author saying he was preoccupied with? Someone else's thoughts, what culture said, what uh, the girl said, what the boy said. No, he said, I'm not listening to their thoughts. I, how precious to me are your thoughts. See, God's thoughts of you and the thoughts of God and the, the, the words of God, they have to be what's precious to you. What God says, what God thinks, what God values, what God wants, that must be what is precious to us. Do you see that? What you believe about yourself, about your worldview, about all things, needs to come from what God tells us, what his word tells us. He's the one that made us, and he knows us best. This is creator God. He made you, 
and love you. And he didn't, he didn't make you and not care about you. He didn't make you and not love you. And, 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 and God loves you far more than you can ever even begin to comprehend. Look at Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 27. Then, this is the very beginning of creation, the creation story. Genesis 1, 26 to 27. Then God said, listen to what happened. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. He created him, male and female, he created them. Now go back to the beginning of that. Who was God talking to when he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness? He was talking to Jesus. Turn to John chapter 1 and look at verses 1 through 4. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was what? With God. And the Word was God. So we could talk about the Trinity there. That's a part of the, all of that there. But they are also distinct uh, 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 beings. And ver look at verse number 2, John chapter 1. He was in the beginning with God. Now look at verse number 3. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So back there in Genesis, let us... God said, let us make man. And so God and Jesus are up there talking, and they're creating everything, and they say, let's make man in our image and in our, our likeness. So again, how can you come to the, the conclusion and believe it that you're a nobody, that you don't have anything to offer, that you're of no value? It's a lie that sometimes we believe, don't we? And things can make us feel that way, and feelings feel, don't they? You feel your feelings, and, and those are strong sometimes. But I want you to know that God Almighty didn't make you a nobody. Now look at John 3.16. Obviously a very uh, easy-to-overlook passage. Uh, but here John records, For God so loved the world, who's in the world? You are, all people, that he did what? He loved you so much. So he didn't do this for a nobody. He didn't do this for someone he didn't love or something he didn't love or something he didn't care. He did this for all those people, all humanity, which he knit together with his own hands intricately and who are fearfully and wonderfully made. For God so loved those people, all of those people, all of humanity, that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So how much are you worth if God did that for you? Not only did he make you, but because of sin, he didn't want to lose you. And so he sends his son to save you if you turn to him. That's somebody that's worth a whole lot in God's eyes. Now, we're not talking about uh, uh, pop culture, uh, self-worth, and all those kinds of things. That's not what we're talking about. Perhaps there's a, there's a time and a place for that type of subject but we're talking about what does what does God say and how does he and how does he see you he doesn't see you as a nobody with nothing to contribute everybody has worth in his sight all people no matter what they look like how old they are where they come from he loves them all now let's look at our next one a somebody so we've looked at our first uh, uh, personality if you will when it comes to a servant of Jesus, and that was that nobody who believes they have nothing to offer. Who, who am I? And as we said, those can be some very real uh, things that people are struggling with. We don't, we don't uh, mean to make light of that in any way, but we need to teach on that and help encourage people and build them up. Uh, now, this next person is the somebody. Now, this person believes, and whether they realize they, they come across that way or even believe that way, this person believes that they are the gift we've all been waiting for, okay? Now, when this person arrives, and if you think about Superman, when he's floating in the sky, and his cape is waving in the air, and, he's just, and then he descends upon the earth. When that person gets here, all of a sudden, we're going to be enlightened, and our problems are going to be fixed. That's somebody who's a somebody. Oh, yeah, they, they think highly of themselves, and, and they've got the answers if we would just... 
Everybody be quiet and get out some, uh, a pen and paper and get ready to take notes because they have the answers. That's a somebody right there. When this person arrives, we'll be, we'll be ready to move forward into the future. We'll no longer live in the dark ages when this person graces us with their knowledge and shows us the way with their great ability. And as I said, I don't think people always mean to come across this way. But, and oftentimes, really, we need to give people the benefit of the doubt because oftentimes people really do have great ideas. And, and, and really what that is is ideas and enthusiasm and a willingness to serve. Uh, but sometimes it's because they can have a critical attitude towards those they're looking at or the place they're at and always find fault wherever they go. So either way, we still need to check ourselves sometimes because it's easy to, to, it's easy to, whether it's a new person or sitting in the pew or, or someone from the outside, it's easy to sit there and think, if they would have just asked me, I would have told them. See, I knew that was going to happen. You see? Well, yeah, while you sit over on the pew, right? <laughs> that, so uh, some people, and now some people will only serve if it's something that puts them into the spotlight. Have you seen that? Now, you need this over here to be done, but they don't want to do that because there's not a spotlight on it. There's not a crowd. There's not an audience. It's not, it's not in the bulletin. It's not a big deal. This is beneath me. This is below me. You need me to do that? I, I'm busy. I don't have time. I'll wait until the spotlight thing comes. Then I'm ready to serve. That's somebody making themselves a somebody. And I've been thinking about this a long time because uh, I see a lot of young preachers doing this because they're all trying to be somebody. They're trying to promote themselves on social media. They're trying to build a platform, and they want to be, uh, they want the, the, the crowd, and they want the, the oohs and the ahs and the amens, and they want the speaking engagements, and they want to be asked to the lectureships, and they want their friends to praise them on social media and all of that. And when you say it, it sounds so ridiculous, doesn't it? There's so many people, even in ministry, who all they're trying to do is be somebody. They're trying to be a somebody. And that's really sad because of what they're called, what they should be focused on. They promote themselves, and they like the attention and the praise of others. Look at Romans chapter 12. Verses, verse number three. I didn't, I didn't get those backwards. I want us to look at verse number three, then verse number two. Look at verse number three first, Romans chapter 12. For by the grace given to me, Paul writes, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Now, if anybody could have thought of himself highly, it would have been Paul. If anybody had the right or the, the, the clout or the, 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 the resume or you know, the, 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 the you know, perfectly understandable reason to think highly of himself, it would have been Paul. And he said, I'm the least of the apostles. In one place and another place, he said, I'm the least of all the saints. Now, he didn't go so far to think he was a nobody because he was hardworking and he was humble and he was a, a servant. He was a great example for us. But let's keep reading there. But to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Now go back to verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Do you see that? Okay, so Paul's saying, be transformed by the renewal of what? Your mind. And that includes how you think about yourself. Okay? So don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. You need a transformed mind to think of yourself with sober judgment. And, and that transformed mind is a mind that is like the mind of Christ. That's what he's getting. So when you become a Christian, your mind is supposed to be changed to be like the mind of Christ. Okay? Philippians chapter 2. Look at verse number 3. Do nothing. Paul, again, writing uh, some of the same type of messages here. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. See that? Selfish ambition. That's somebody trying to be somebody. That's what their goal is it. The uh, helping people grow spiritually. They, they may do that. They may teach. They may preach. They may serve. But that's not really what's motivating them. What's motivating them is they want to be somebody. It's a heart issue with, with, with all of this. 
So do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, look at this, count others more significant than yourself. Now that's not going so far to say you're a nobody. He's saying count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only to his own interest. It's okay to have your own interest. He's not saying that. But also to the interest of others. See, your idea, your plan, your, your, your suggestion, all of that, your interest, your desire, fine. But you're not the only one, are you? There's a whole lot of other people that, and ideas and thoughts and needs and all of that that needs to be considered. So we need to consider not only our own interests, but also the interests of others. Have this mind, remember he wrote about mind in Romans chapter 12, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though, now he's going to tell us what was the mind of Christ right here, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, in other words, to held on, hold on to, like I'm not going to let go of this, I'm in heaven, I've got a good, he said no, I've got, uh, my father has work for me to do, we've got to go save people that will turn to us on earth. So he was willing uh, to let go of what he had in heaven and go to earth. But emptied himself, you see that, by taking on the form of a what? Servant. Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And therefore, because he wasn't trying, he didn't see himself as a nobody, Jesus himself wasn't here trying to be a somebody, but he saw himself as a servant and obedient to God even to the point of the, uh, death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Now look at Romans 12, 16. Go back to chapter, Romans chapter 12 and see what Paul writes there. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be, what? Haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Now, and the more experience you have, the more skill and natural ability and knowledge, perhaps that's when it's harder to not get too wise in your own eyes because you've you've been doing this you've been there done that you you know you've got some answers and solutions and 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 things like that to offer and it doesn't mean don't speak up and don't contribute and all that kind of thing it's it's the way it's approached are you trying to be a somebody or something different so we should welcome ideas welcome people enthusiastic about serving and we do but people also need to ask, what's motivating me? Are they trying to be a somebody to feel significant and to get the spotlight, or do they truly have the heart of a servant? So let's look at our, our last point, a servant. So not a nobody, not a somebody, but a servant. And let's look at this, this uh, here in Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 through 28. Matthew 20, 20 through 28. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee, came up to him with their sons, came up to Jesus, and kneeling down before him, she asked him for something. And he said to her, what do you want? She said to Jesus, say that these two sons of mine are to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. Jesus answered, you do not know what you're asking. See, she was, she was trying, to, trying to force and make her sons be a somebody. You see that? She didn't want him to be a nobody. Maybe she saw him that way. And she wanted to make sure, oh, no, my sons are going to be a somebody. Regardless of what, her, what was in her heart, Jesus said, he knew. And he said, you don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? Then they said to him, we are able. It doesn't sound like a servant's attitude, does it? It sounds like somebody who thinks there's somebody right there. Verse 23, he said to them, you will drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and my, at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. And when the ten heard it, they were indignant at the two brothers. Why? They were over here trying to be somebody instead of serving the way Jesus had taught them to do. 
It shall not be. Now look at this. But Jesus called them to him and said, verse 25, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. See that? And their great ones exercise authority over them. Verse 26, It shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your what? Servant. And whoever would be first among you must be your slave. That's a different word. Now, verse 28, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, he didn't come here try to be somebody. He came here to what? To serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And that's exactly what Paul is describing about Jesus that we looked at back in Philippians chapter 2. It's also the same thing that Jesus demonstrated in John 13 when he washed the disciples' feet. Look at that. We'll skip around a couple of verses there. In, in verses 4 through 5 of John 13, it, we're told that Jesus rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garment and, taking a towel, tied it a, around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped, wrapped around him. Now skip down to verses 12 through 15. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. See, right there, he called them not just teacher. They called him, but Lord. And he never, never ever thought he was a somebody, even though he absolutely uh, was. He was the son of God. Look at verse 14. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you a what? An example that you should do just as I have done to you. He wasn't over here being a nobody, and he didn't teach his disciples that. He wasn't over here being a somebody to be served like a king. And the people wanted to do that, didn't they? They wanted to do that. They wanted him to be this, this powerful earthly king. He showed them he came to serve, and he said, you do the same thing. You're not a nobody, and don't try to be a somebody. Spend your life being a servant. Look at 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 through 11. Peter writes this, As each has received a gift, Whatever your abilities are, whatever your gifts are, what does Peter say to do with those? Use it to what? Get a, get a crowd, get a following, get likes, get, get, get that next gig, get, uh, build a platform, be somebody? That's not what he said. He said, as each has received a gift, use it to what? Serve one another as good stewards of the varied grace, of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks, he's going looking at some gifts. Whoever speaks as one who speaks the oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. In order that in everything God may be glorified. Not you, not somebody else, but in all that we do that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him, not you, not somebody else. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us with his own life that he wants his followers to be servants. He doesn't want you thinking poorly of yourself, that you're a nobody and you have nothing to offer. And he doesn't want you seeing yourself that way. He, he wants you to know how much he loves you and how important you are to him, which is why he was willing to go to the cross for you. And he doesn't want you thinking too highly of yourself where you can't serve the way he wants you to do. He wants you serving with the same attitude that he had. And so I hope we can encourage you this, uh, this evening in your service, in your, your devotion to God. Don't worry about trying to have some kind of reputation or your name somewhere. And, 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 and I'm serious. People here are so good about that. Uh, you, people do all kinds of things here, and you have no idea who does what. You can have an event, and you look up, and you can be in charge of the event, and you're about to go try to get things cleaned up, and you turn around and everything's cleaned up, and, and, and you're the last one here. You don't even know who did it. That's the kind of servants we have here. So it's always good to remind ourselves, what does the Bible teach about our attitude, our disposition towards being servants? To be the kind of servant Christ would have us to be.
And if you're feeling like you have nothing to offer, maybe for whatever reason, health, age, you hadn't got plugged in, you're kind of quiet, you're shy, you're not even, maybe you're just not sure what you can do or what you want to do. Maybe you've had a bad experience at another congregation where you tried and it didn't go well and it made made you embarrassed, it hurt your feelings, and that's understandable. We don't want to be like that here. And so we want you to know you're not a nobody. Don't try to be a somebody. But we want to encourage all of our members to be servants just like Christ has called us to serve for his glory. And if we can help you tonight in any way, we invite you to come forward now as we stand and sing.